On the day, September 3rd, 1878, the weather was bright and the passengers were excited as the pleasure steamer set off from London and headed out to catch the end of the summer sun and the fresh sea air of Sheerness. It was an inexpensive trip. Tickets were about two shillings, depending on where the passengers wanted to be. Most of the approximately 700 people on board were upper working class or lower middle class families. The children were tired, but happy, at the famous Rush for Pleasure Gardens in North Fleet, playing on the promenade at Sheerness, or wandering around the popular resort of Gravesend. As the evening drew in, many families took the decision to retreat inside the saloon or to go to their cabins below deck. It was a move that sealed their fates. Alfred Thomas Merriman, a chef, had been asked at the last minute to work on the ship. The 30-year-old father of four from Bow, East London, was no doubt grateful for the extra cash, as well as the rare opportunity to escape the dirty streets of the capital. At about 7.40 p.m., as the Princess Alice neared North Woolwich Pier, he was standing on the deck by the saloon door. Just as he was saying how splendid the voyage had been, he saw it. The huge collier, a huge coal-carrying ship, bearing down on the smaller vessel. The Bywell Castle plowed straight into the starboard side of the Princess Alice, which weighed less than a third of the 890-ton collier. The vessel sliced the Princess Alice in two with a sickening crash. The panic on board was terrible, the women and children screaming, rushing to the bridge for safety. Merriman's witness accounts reads, I at once rushed to the captain and asked if there's anything to be done. And he said, we are sinking fast, do your best. Those were the last words he said. At that moment, down she went. The ends of the ship rose into the air as the middle sank, sending people on deck hurtling into the watery chasm between. Merriman and others on deck were pitched into the churning water, while the unfortunate passengers below deck were trapped. Better yet, those that made it out of the ship were met with tons of untreated sewage spewed from outlets near where the boats collided. The water bubbled with raw detritus, giving out a stench strong enough to kill a man. The men, women, and children thrashing about in the water breathed in lungfuls of toxic waste. Despite crew members of the Bywell Castle Collier throwing down planks of wood, life buoys, and even chicken coops for the people to cling to, the heavy Victorian clothing of the time made the people sink even deeper and deeper into the abyss. Deafened by the screams of his doomed fellow passengers, Merriman, the chef, still clung to a piece of wreckage to stay afloat. At last, Merriman was taken to South Woolwich Pier after he was retrieved from the water. There were others also rescued, but few recovered, he said. One boy died in my lap. Mr. Merriman was one of about 130 people pulled from that river alive several of whom died in the following days and weeks, in part from complications from swallowing that putrid water. In the matter of these minutes, children had been orphaned, husbands and wives widowed, and whole families wiped out. Days after the crash, bodies washed up on shore, and bodies were laid to rest. But what caused this? Over the next two months, 19 men on the jury heard hours of evidence the written version, of which was about 5,000 pages long. The Bywell Castle should have stopped and reversed its engine sooner. The Princess Alice should have stopped and should not have turned. All ships on the Thames would avoid collisions more if stringent navigation rules were enforced, despite the mass loss of life and changes brought about as a result of the sinking of the Princess Alice. Today, there are a few clues as to what really happened on that fateful evening.